Hello, everybody, and thanks for joining this session. So during this session, I'm going to describe uh, proxy SQL and uh, how it has evolved over time and how it has become, uh, what is the journey that has become made it, uh, from a simple MySQL proxy to the de facto tools that scales MySQL. So let's start and go into the slides. So quick introduction who I am. I am the founder of Proxy SQL LLC, and I am the author, the initial author of Proxy SQL, uh, so the product of the same name. And my background has been mostly as a MySQL BPA for uh, uh, roughly two decades now, so quite a long time. Now, what we do at Proxy SQL? So we take care of Proxy SQL development itself, and we also provide the support service, including training, but also uh, we provide support for Proxy SQL, MySQL, and, and DevOps. And we also provide consulting service. Um, a, quick, um, a quick note, we have uh, upcoming training, uh, probably scheduled by the end of this month. So if you're interested in Proxy SQL training, please come and register. Uh, just please register on our website. Okay, now let's have a quick discussion. This, consider this as an introduction to the topic of this session. It is how uh, software stacks work and how they fit together when there is a proxy, when there is a database system involved. So there are several key attributes that are relevant. Specifically, uh, the key, those key attributes are performance, efficiency, usability, visibility, availability, and manageability. And we're going to dig dive into each of them. The very first few are mostly an uh, introduction to what is coming next. So, specifically, um, performance. When it comes to performance, we have a lot of vendors in the database ecosystem, no matter if it's just MySQL or others like Postgres um, and other storage engines, because it is a threat to everybody. Uh, so, there is a competition on improving performance. So, you know, there are a lot of benchmarks that are being executed between those parties and independent parties as well, depending on which one is best. And there is always a race to who is able to perform so that they will provide better performance. So a new storage engine will be created quite favorably, and those storage engines implement new algorithm of any sort of algorithm. And they always try to add new features that are somehow, in a way or another, related to performance. So they be able to provide more performance. Uh, but you know, uh, you can have a lot of performance from a system, but the system still cannot be efficient because it might be costly to provide those sort of performance. Uh, let's make an example. If a database system is able to perform greatly only transient memory, well, then you still need a lot of memory to be able to. Uh, be able to run this system. So it might not necessarily be very efficient, or it may just a lot of CPU and so on. So it is very important that those systems are able to uh, not only be able to perform very well, but they need to be efficient. So have a good use of the hardware that is available for them. And those systems also need to be as usable as possible. This means that we do not have just a limited set of features that make them good for a specific uh, scenarios, but uh, they need to allow the users uh, to have extra features to be able to exploit such features. Um, and, you know, for example, it could be, um, for example, this is here, this, this system could be cloud-friendly. That's a very trendy uh, set of features nowadays. Uh, the system should also be should be able to provide visibility, and um, there are plenty of providers and vendors that provide uh, visibility for third parties. So you have you can have a little system or also application that export metrics, and those metrics can be processed by by certain vendor that are that is able to monitoring the system, provide trending, and also generate alerting or such. Uh, metrics. An example for it is PMM buttercoin itself. Now, uh, when it comes to availability, and here I'm going to start deep diving into the MySQL ecosystem, 
We have uh, multiple cluster solution. Uh, we can start from MySQL Resync um, or Semisync replication, that is the historical one. And then we can also have uh, Galera, uh, that is probably uh, the second for this one. And then we have MySQL cluster, specifically MDB. And then we have the Corona PXC, that is a uh, modified version of Galera. Then we have group replication. And then recently, we also have AWS Aurora that is joining the party of cluster solution. Now, what differentiate those? Well, of course, each one of them has its own set of features, but we can categorize them in two, set, in two major groups. So cluster solution that has built-in HA and cluster solution that do not have built-in HA. Uh, for example, MySQL cluster, Galera, uh, Performatic C, group replication, those has built-in HA because they are able to uh, to change themselves and to change the stuff of the cluster and provide the HA. While with regard to MySQL async replication or also MySQL Aurora, you need some tooling around it to provide a the HA itself. Now, uh, when it comes to managing the HA, it then is where we are speaking about manageability. And manageability, in the case of a cluster solution, you need an external manager. Uh, we already have, uh, for a simplification, we have a MHA or the state or, or replicator manager. And those are able to modify uh, the database infrastructure to provide the HA itself. But there is still a question that stays unanswered how to take advantages of those systems that are now highly available. And to answer this question, I'm going to describe uh, a layered architecture when it comes to stack software stack that using MySQL. So generally speaking, we not only have two layers. We have an application layer and a database layer. And you know, so far we're speaking about this database layer should be highly available. Okay, so we just say that okay, we have application and a highly available database system. And you know, this system sometimes it also needs an external manager. So let's add this in the picture. And uh, now we have uh, say the application to communicate with the system. And the system can be quite flexible. I mean, you can have uh, that uh, the application topology is changing, or when you say that the added, so that the removed and things like this. So the application needs some way of knowing all this. So this is normally done um, using service discovery. This is one of the approach um, that is quite common already. Uh, okay, uh, now, uh, still there is a sort of problem in this sort of scenarios is that the fact that uh, those two layers, uh, they have boundaries, but Somehow those boundaries are not very well defined. Like for example, the MySQL the application need to know in case of a synchronous application need to know which one is the cradle, which one is the, the, the replica. If you are using the uh, Galera or Perconatic C, you need to know uh, you, you might want to only use one server as the writer and not more than one. And so another application needs to decide which one is the uh, which one is the one that needs to be divided. So it needs some coordination. So the boundaries between those two layers are not often very well defined because I mean, one layer needs to know more about the other one. And furthermore, you can have that every layer can actually have multiple, can be divided into multiple layer. And uh, now we have, a, you know, basically what we have now is two major layers that communicate to each other using an API. And in case of MySQL, this API itself is the MySQL protocol. So how do you make communicate? Well, unless you have the application that is communicating directly with the other system, you normally utilize followed balancer. Historically, a uh, layer four load balancer was used, basically TCP load balancer. The application connects to it, the load balancer will take care of uh, forwarding the connection to, to the backend, to the right backend, and now you have a connection from the application all the way down to the database server that the end the proxy between is performing just load balancing. 
and a layer for balancing. Could be a software load balancing or a hardware load balancer. Now, uh, what is the problem in this sort of architecture? Well, so the, the major problem in this sort of architecture is that this layer four uh, proxy has no idea what is for working. And on the other hand, what we have is that the application and the server uh, often take each other as a black box. So the application has often does have no idea what is happening as a database layer, it's just sending traffic to it. And on the other hand, the database layer is doing nothing more than trying to uh, perform as many requests as possible without ever knowing why those sort of requests are coming. And say, for example, there is an offending application that was deployed and there was a bug in the application, now the application is in a loop with a certain amount of traffic. Or on the other hand, uh, a query that normally was running fine out from very soon days, but the application, part of the application does not know that there is a query that is affecting performance and other applications are just issuing more requests. And this makes the database system even slower and performance degrade. And in this sort of architecture, what we have is that basically there is no way of managing the traffic. So there is no concept of routing, there is no concept of the time the query if something is wrong, there is no concept of quality of service, like certain traffic, certain type of traffic should have higher priority than other. Um, so if there is an offending query, just slow it down or block it completely. And also we don't have any sort of flow control. And those are all examples of what is missing in the architecture I was showing before. And this is basically what triggered the initial development of Proxy SQL. So, uh, what were the main motivation of Proxy SQL? Uh, the idea was to empower the DBAs. Uh, in fact, it was made by DBAs. I mean, my work as I was mentioning before, has been mostly a CDBA for DBA. So the development was driven by challenges that were known from the database, from a DBA perspective. Uh, so there was a concrete development. And to improve basically the manageability of uh, the database system, and uh, in a way to create a layer that was able to shield the database. Uh, a small note here, um, I have got some feedback that when I use the word empowered DBA, it was somehow uh, misinterpreted. And uh, apparently, somebody had the impression that what I meant is like there are two groups there are developers from one end and the other base from the other, and the DBA from the other. And the DBA is basically now has more power in uh, using proxy sequence. This was not the idea. And uh, I'm sorry that somehow. Uh, this message was be, has been interpreted. What I actually meant here in a power the DBA is that uh, normally uh, at, at the MySQL server, uh, the DBA has no power of controlling what sort of traffic is being executed by my SQL server. The other server is just trying to execute as much traffic as possible. While uh, proxy SQL is allowed to have a tool that is able to determine what need to be executed and how. Like for example, if queries need to be rewritten or if query need to be artificially throttled. And of course, this like means that DBA has just the freedom to do whatever they want, but there should be so of course some some communication and some uh, decision to be shared between DBAs and developers to identify which are the problematic query, the problematic traffic and take action based on this. Okay, so here is the initial list of features that were um, implemented in Proxy SQL. So of course, the very first one was to be able to have uh, load balancing, so being at least, to be at least be able to do what our layer four proxy is able to do. But then there was also some very important features that were important from the very beginning. That is the ability of rewriting queries on the fly. So if there was, if we if were able to identify an authentic query, and those query could be rewritten, and the write could be something very simple 
like for syntax or changing some word flows to make the feel more efficient, Proxy SQL had the requirement of providing those fields. And then another one was the ability of having caching outside the database. Um, so if the application was issuing the same queries over and over and this query was expensive, what we could do is to cache it in a middle layer that is proxy SQL, and basically the application is reading this result from this middle layer without ever knowing that the request never hit the database. So from an application point of view, it just executes the query and the result set was returned. Now, the next important feature to implement was connection pooling and multiplexing. And those two features are somehow correlated. Specifically, uh, no matter how many connections the application opens to the proxy, proxy SQL will have its own set of connections to the database server. And those connections are, um, they could be of a completely different number compared to the number of uh, connection from the application to the proxy. So if you are on a layer four, if you are layer four proxy, there is a mapping of one to one. So one client connection is equal to one backend connection. While with proxy SQL, this is absolutely not the case. And you can have hundreds of or thousands of client connections to be then narrowed down into very few uh, connections to uh, the server. And it's not very unusual to have a 100 to 1 ratio. This means that uh, most of applications when using proxy SQL normally tend to drop the number of backend connections up to 99%. So, for example, you can have 10,000 connections to the proxy, and then the proxy will have only 100 connections to the server. And this is especially thanks to the multiplexing features. The multiplexing feature is the ability of sharing one single backend connection among multiple clients. So possibly is able to identify when a query, when a backend connection can be shared by multiple clients at the same time and when not. And then of course, uh, real-time securities. This was the initial feature to implement later on more complex routing algorithm. To be able to do this, it was required that proxy SQL was able to understand the MySQL protocol. So not just forwarding projects from one end to another one, so from the client to the server and from the server to the client, but actually to understand the wire protocol and to identify the boundaries of queries, results, and to get back and so on. And the way of implementing it then was that proxy has to become a reverse proxy. It is again quite different than a forward proxy. It is the typical case of a layer for proxy. Because it's a reverse proxy, what it actually means that for the client, proxy SQL is the backend. So the client executes the query on the proxy. Proxy SQL will then figure out what to do with it, offer main security, and decide what to execute it. Then execute the query, whatever is come from the backend, some transformation can be done as well, and then there's a result that is sent back to the client. So uh, going back to the layer architecture we mentioned before, this basically has changed. It's changing from having a layer four loop balancer to have a proxy SQL that now is a uh, layer seven reverse proxy. Great. Now uh, we have this architecture in which uh, the database system is highly enabled using one of the cluster solution. I'm going to speak about PC in the second part of this webinar, uh, but because the database system is highly available, it is very important that proxy SQL itself is highly available. So uh, to have maximum uptime, so it should not be just started or it should not touch, of course. So to, to, to have this, it's, well, it is very important that proxy SQL, the set of proxy SQL should be avoided at all costs. And this also means that when we want to make some configuration change, we should absolutely avoid so we implemented this, we implemented the idea that all the configuration needs to be done at runtime. And there is nothing extremely new with this one because there is a lot of services that have this approach to have a configuration that can be changed at runtime. But the way we implemented in ToxySQL is quite uh, interesting and, and unique. And we're going to discuss this in more details.
Um, and um, specifically, what we're going to discuss is the admin interface. Yeah, the admin interface is um, something quite unique in the proxy SQL. It is basically an interface that uses the MySQL protocol. So anyone can connect to proxy SQL using a MySQL client. And in this interface, all the configuration is stored in tables and in database. This makes it extremely uh, interesting features because this means that the configuration itself can be created and it can also be added, modified, and updated with running the ML statement, update, insert, and delete. Not only this, but because data is the configuration itself is in tables, we can have some constraint on those tables, so we are able also to perform some input validation uh, in the configuration itself. So you know you cannot put a number, where, sorry, you cannot put a string where you are supposed to, to put a number and uh, similarly or oh, create a status that do not exist, only two statuses are allowed, and similar. Also, we can have some sort of atomic commit. So basically we can change. We can perform a lot of changes in the configuration, either uh, automated or manually if we want to test some new configuration. And once we have configured it, tested it looks correct, we can load this configuration runtime, and this would be an automatic uh, commit, so to be loaded uh, at runtime. And if for whatever reason we don't like this configuration, it is very easy to roll back. So it says, um, let's revert the configuration to the previous one. And again, all this is done at runtime without any, any restart. And then we introduced also a uh, multi layer configuration. Uh, this idea was actually brought by Cisco Router. Um, uh, so basically, and I'm going to show you here now in, into more details. So if you connect to the admin interface and you run show tables, as you can see, you can connect to the admin interface using a normal MySQL client. And uh, you can have queries like, like this show tables, and you have a list of all the tables that you can run for, um, that you can have for the configuration. And um, the idea of having the configuration in, um, in tables, this was actually uh, a very, I believe it was a very good idea because with the time passing, it was clear that the configuration was becoming always more and more complex. So having the ability of having configuration somehow structured in data, it was going to make it uh, less error prone and uh, would also create some dependency between tables. <clears throat> now, next. And uh, as I was mentioned before, uh, Every, every configuration has its own table, and, and this is, for instance, an example of how the MySQL server tables look like. So you have the house group, um, and you know the house group needs to be an integer, created at zero, a uh, house name, port, port needs to be a number, and this other uh, setting. Now, how do you perform the configuration? It's a simple DML statement, in this case it's an insert statement. Now, after you do this, you can also verify that it's correct, just running a select statement. And um, before I was mentioning that we have those three layer multi layer, I will explain soon what this is exactly. But you can also run a select star from runtime as a server to verify if the configuration has been loaded or not, and at this point won't be loaded. And, and you can also check on this. And in this, uh, also in this case, won't be there. But uh, if you are happy with what you are seeing in the MySQL server table, it's okay. Now I want to load to runtime, so basically making it effective. It is anatomical, uh, it's like an atomic commit. And the way you're doing this is running load MySQL server to runtime. So now the new service that you have introduced, it will be processed by proxy SQL, while before it was just a configuration, so it was no more different than anything accomplished by you without applying here. And if you are happy with the configuration that you have performed, at this point you can also save it to disk, running save MySQL server to disk. And now if you want, you can 
check the status of the of the other tables to verify that actually the configuration has been updated on time and save this. So before I was to mention that we have this approach of multi-layer configuration. Specifically, uh, we have a configuration file that normally is read only during the bootstrap. Once it is served for the first time, it's normally ignored after that, unless you run some extra command in which you want to SQL to refresh the configuration from it. And then you have um, also the configuration in memory, which is what you normally configure when you connect to the admin interface using an SQL client. And then you also have the runtime configuration, which is what has been loaded to runtime. And then on this one, the on this one is basically for this persistent. Once uh, the configuration goes to disk, uh, everything that is in the configuration file uh, starts being in your so it refers of SQL uh, after the initial bootstrap. The configuration in the configuration file is ignored. This approach is uh, setting new. Was actually an idea from MySQL, uh, MySQL cluster and DB. So the management server created the config file only during the initial bootstrap, but then it ignored it. And uh, in MySQL 8, we actually have something very similar because you can have you can persist the, the variables. So once the variable has been persisted. Uh, the configuration, the variables in the configuration file are actually ignored and they are only read from um, the persistent storage in the MySQL server. So this approach is actually being applied uh, to, to MySQL itself. Now, um, I was mentioning having the ability of having this proxy in between allows to have several features to improve the manageability of the traffic. And for instance, um, we, one of the very good things was that we were having seamless plan and account failover. So if my SQL fails and, uh, and the current file is replaced with a new one, the application does not need to know that anything has changed because it is completely handled by the proxy SQL. And then we have other features, uh, protein query, Coming up query, or for example, if a query is executing for longer than a period of time, but SQL can drop it, can kill it basically. And other features like firewall, the initial firewall implementation. Now let's go a bit into the details about the failover. Uh, something very important to, to remember is that proxy SQL never performs the failover. Proxy SQL is only responsible for detecting it. So it detects that if a backend become unhealthy. Stop sending traffic to it. If um, backends become unhealthy while Proxy SQL is running a query on it, it has the feature of re executing the query on a different server that is healthy. But Proxy SQL itself is not the software responsible for performing the failover. This needs to be done from a different process like an application manager. <coughs> So this is a classic scenario of how a failover happened uh, without proxy SQL. So if the master dies, the application loses the connection to the master, and uh, well, now it doesn't know anymore which one is, is the master unless the application is somehow notified to change and switch stuff into a different server. How to switch this, a bit, it depends on the application. Sometimes it's uh, discovery, sometimes configuration file needs to be updated, the application needs to be restarted. And so on. And this normally means downtime, extend downtime. While with proxy SQL, the failure, uh, the failover scenario is way more simpler because the application never lose connection to the proxy. But the proxy is able to determine if one of, uh, if, sorry, if the master failed, the old traffic we need is not affected. The request was supposed to be sent to the master and put on hold. And when a new Server when I say this command it becomes a new writer, so some verification manager is changing the topology. Proxy SQL is able to identify it, and now the requests from the application are being sent to the new to the new writer. Simple as that. So from an application point of view, nothing has changed other than some queries have stored for a short period of time, normally few seconds. Okay. 
and I don't know the report of CIPA is not the one responsible for performing the thing over. Okay, but we already detected. Now, um, the scenarios I described before it was about uh, async replication. And uh, the reason why I described only this one is that because it's the simplest scenarios. Um, and by proxy will, of course, support way more complex cluster solution. And um, at the very beginning, it didn't support all of them, and not, none of them listed here. Um, but it was possible to extend the way to SQL and then uh, different cluster solution having the scheduler. The scheduler was nothing more than uh, the ability of SQL to execute script at the lower interval, and the script could perform several actions. And the most common use for the scheduler was that those scripts were the one responsible for checking the status of the cluster and the configuring proxy SQL if this was required. Well, the scheduler is always there as a feature that can be used, but now proxy SQL support uh, various replication topologies or various cluster solutions that are listed here. So, career group replication, C, SQL, MDP and uh, Aurora. Now, as I was saying, now proxy SQL is able to handle so many clusters, but what about my SQL at scale? Well, several features were added to time passing, uh, mostly by customer request, to be able to have proxy SQL able to uh, really handle scenarios, com complex scenarios with uh, um, with a lot of users, a lot of connections, and so on. But specifically, ProxySQL is able to handle millions of MySQL users. And here, I don't mean MySQL connection, but actually texting users, like millions of user names, distinct user name. And each proxy is able to handle hundreds of thousands of the server, hundreds of thousands of connection. And this is very important because MySQL is not able to handle this. So my performance of my SQL started creating after 2000 connection, while proxy SQL is able to offload the number of connections from the database server and be able to handle hundreds of thousands of connections. And uh, it's also able to perform routing with a multiple criteria like schema, and it's really able to route traffic to millions of schema based on you know, some algorithm that does, that does this basically. And uh, we, you don't have to use one proxy for only one cluster, but you can have multiple clusters and multiple technology behind one single proxy. So you can have group replication, Galera, and the MySQL, normal MySQL replication, all handled by proxy SQL at the same time. So um, now we are basically having a situation in which the application somehow needs to connect to the big server. It doesn't need to know anything about the big server because it is all handled by, by proxy SQL. And so basically we are now past we're basically passing from a system in which the application communicates with the database through a layer for proxy to have something a bit way more complex because now proxy SQL is basically Acting as a database as a service layer. So the application just issued a request to the proxy and then proxy will figure out what to do with this request, to which serving to be executed, which uh, algorithm will need to be implemented, and so on. Now, um, evolution, speaking about how things change in proxy SQL, what I a common problem was about how to configure proxy SQL at scale, because if you have only one proxy, it is very easy to configure it. You just um, push the configuration somehow, and your config file or SQL file, and just load to and just load to runtime. But if you have um, a complex scenario in which you have hundred or close to one thousand proxy, and we have customer having such a large setup, uh, well, there is no way of keeping track of each proxy and configure them. Um, just pushing the configuration to them. So we need a configuration manager that was able to scale to thousands of proxy. So this is why when we implement the proxy cluster, proxy cluster is something very 
um, very powerful. Basically, it allows to have uh, the configuration applied to only one proxy, and uh, you can have a lot of proxy that are basically pulling the configuration from the single proxy that you have configured. And uh, this solution, somehow, you can find it a uh, single point of failure because you are only changing the configuration in one proxy. But in reality, it doesn't create a single point of failure because this is only related to the configuration. So you can have those, the other proxy that are able to continue certain traffic, they will just not be able to get a new configuration. Nonetheless, the way proxy security cluster is implemented is that you can have a high level of reliability. In fact, you can have two or more a uh, number of proxies that are the one responsible for pushing the configuration. And you can have hundreds or thousands of proxies that are the one pulling the configuration from the very few ones that are the source of truth when it comes to configuration. And uh, this makes extremely appealing for certain type of um, for certain type of topologies. For example, you can run a proxy SQL on Kubernetes in which you have the application connecting to a proxy SQL service. And this proxy SQL service, you can configure it either the normal way, like pushing the configuration to each one of those containers, or you can have it on project, which is basically running a proxy SQL cluster. On those extra proxy that is not setting any traffic, you change the configuration there, and this configuration is automatically pushed to all the proxies that are setting traffic. So you don't need to change anything on those middle proxy. Again, in this graph, I only put one proxy, that is the controller one. I think already you can have more than one. And again, it's very important to note that if that single proxy goes down, uh, this is not in any way affecting uh, the traffic that is passing through the middle layer proxy. It's just affecting the new traffic. Uh, sorry, it's only affecting uh, new configuration because there is no way of pushing new configuration. But again, you can make this system highly available very easily. And other interesting things is that in, uh, in the previous slide, when I had this multi-layer proxy, uh, if one of the proxy goes down, basically uh, the application needs to pay back to some other proxy. While uh, something that we can implement in Kubernetes is something like having a uh, multi-layer proxy, so cascading, in which the application run proxy SQL as a sidecar, and then the sidecar will have us its own backend cluster of proxy. And because proxy SQL itself is able to handle failure scenarios, if one of those proxy in the middle layer goes down, the proxy in the application layer is able to just forward that to another proxy without the application ever noticing that a failure happened. Now, um, other features that have been introduced in proxy SQL to make it as highly available as possible is the ability of running multiple instances on the same board. This feature is extremely important because it allows something very interesting, like the ability of performing an online version of it. So you can run two different versions of proxy SQL on the same port, and you can gradually drain connection from one proxy to the other one. So you can change version with absolutely no downtime. And these are the features like the ability of copying the listener, starting it, and resuming, and, and so on. Now, ProSQL is an open source project. Uh, so this means it has become uh, by nature very popular over time. And more often than uh, not, there are always new um, feature requests from the community. And most of the time, those features are being implemented, of course, based on priority. But there are other features that have been implemented over the time. Like here, there is a list of some of them, like the ability of having data masking, that is basically the ability to mask the data that is coming from, from the other server. And this is only done regarding the query and executed by the client. This needs to work in and then with firewall. So mm, whatever is not allowed by proxy SQL is automatically blocked. And then uh, we had support for ClickHouse. Initially, uh, MySQL, uh, sorry, ClickHouse 
you know, understand the MySQL protocol. So Proxy SQL allowed to have MySQL client connecting to Proxy SQL, and Proxy SQL was able to execute query on backend. Um, on ClickHouse backend, ClickHouse was sending the results into Proxy SQL. Proxy SQL was transforming the, the result in MySQL format and sending it to the client. And then implement cache reads using HTTP. Um, basically, what it allows you is the ability of reading from uh, replicas data that is consistent with what the client has written on the writer. So this does not mean that the replica is in sync with the writer, but what it means is that whatever the client has written on the writer is able to read from a replica. And the way we implement this is adding a process. It is a bin log reader and um, turning on every slaves. This is reading the bin log, stripping all the data with the exception of the GDD and sending the GDD to Proxy So in real time, Proxy we know which GDD has been executed to replica. Then we implemented um, similar features related to encryption. We specifically implemented um, backend encryption very early. Then on to zero, we also introduced SSL encryption for the communication from the client back to the proxy. But there are other features that we introduced uh, related to encryption, like for example, passwords and proxy SQL are hashed, clusters, communication is encrypted as well in proxy 2.1. And uh, we are also uh, planning to implement some features to have uh, encryption address for the SQL database file. And what else? We, we also implemented LTAP authentication and uh, we have an advanced firewall. Uh, basically, the initial firewall was that you have to specify what you don't want to SQL to run or to allow on a specific query. While now we have this ability of having uh, proxy will learning uh, what are legit traffic and uh, basically you can run proxy in this mode it will learn what is the legit traffic and then you can switch it into protection mode and from that moment on proxy will reject any sort of traffic that hasn't seen before um, so you know if you have some sort of SQL injection proxy will also be able to reject this and uh, we want to introduce our uh, REST API. Uh, this is very similar to the scaler, but works on the on HTTP. Uh, so basically, what we have is that the client can read proxy SQL on a specific endpoint, and proxy SQL is able to execute um, some some script or some executable and return the result to the client if the client hit a specific endpoint. Now, when it comes to visibility, as I was mentioning, as I was mentioning before, Proxy SQL is in between the application and database. So what this means that it sees all the traffic passing through it. Every time the application is communicating with the database, the communication happens to the proxy. But this is actually the best place to collect any sort of information about the traffic. So uh, we can check. Not only we know what is the status of the backend uh, running monitoring, but we also know if the backend is healthy, like if the backend is sending results, if the backend is not responding, uh, how many rows have been sent from the backend, how many bytes have been sent so in terms of traffic and so on, how many uh, rows have been modified from the backend and so on. And Proxy is able to collect all those metrics. And those metrics are also exported. And guess what? Those metrics are exported again in tables. Uh, because the SQL has this, uh, the admin interface in which everything is tables that so you can query, you can run order by, join, and so on. So you can perform, you, you can create your own um, export of those statistics. And uh, uh, using the same algorithm, Oh, it's spring everything in a tabular format, we are also able to export internal metrics. So, quick quick overview of the tables that are available. Uh, if, again, in the interface, you run short tables from start, you see plenty of tables that have displays internal uh, information about proxy SQL. 
So we have added database called Moldor. You can run short tables from Moldor and those are tables related to, to the monitoring module. Every type of SQL is checking the status of one of the backend. It normally goes here in one of those tables. And uh, for SQL is also able to store uh, historical data. So not only export how things look at this point in time, but also how persistent historical data. Uh, so you can have historical in a SQL query, just this information about all the query, but also you know, can store uh, information about status variables, uh, information about connection pool, about connection, memory usage, uh, like hours, day, and so on. So those, all those information uh, can be stored long term. And they are stored on, on tables, so you know you can run some sort of searching or aggregation or searching how Apoxysical was behaving in a certain point in, in the past. So again, driven by user requests, we are implementing way more features, like specifically we are implementing, we, we had from very long time an HTTP server that is able to explore metrics from Apoxysical, uh, but we have a new version under, under development, we plan to release very soon. And this new web UI, does not just export way more metrics than the original one, but it also allows to configure proxy SQL using a web interface. And we believe that this will be a big, big, um, will absolutely improve the usability of proxy SQL because uh, it will make it way more easy to, to configure it. Now, uh, speaking about web UI and also metrics, uh, we also have our uh, parameters exported. Um, so basically using the same web uh, web server that is built in inside Proxy SQL, we will be able to export all internal metrics and um, uh, information about the backend using uh, the web, this built in web server. So the Prometheus exported will be, uh, it will be built in inside Proxy SQL, so there will be no need for an external exporter like the one that, um, that Percona used for, for PMM. This will make things easier because now PMM can just use the built-in uh, exported in Proxy SQL instead of relying on an external exporter. And um, that's uh, that's all I have for now. And um, so basically, um, what I want to iterate is the fact that most of the development of Proxy SQL is driven by uh, by the community. So by people that are using Proxy SQL identify which are the need in the environment or common need in the MySQL ecosystem. And they either, uh, and they normally propose new features to be added. And, um, and that's it. Thank you very much for joining the session. I see there were a few, few questions I can, uh, I can quickly uh, go through them in the next uh, few minutes that I have available and uh, quickly answer them. So, uh, would this be webinar recording sent to us? Uh, yes. Um, how to make Proxy SQL HA itself? So, uh, this is a very interesting question. And um, how to make Proxy SQL HA? It really depends from uh, from various um, from from how you want to deploy it. Generally speaking, um, you can have possible to uh, have HA based on a variety of solution. For instance, you can have uh, the most common one is to have PostSQL uh, tightly integrated with application. So the application and uh, PostSQL they work as a single unit. In uh, Kubernetes world, they are like a sidecar. Will work as a sidecar. So, if Proxy SQL all the application fail, they fail as a unit. And uh, this is one of the way, but you can have multiple one, like having Proxy SQL behind a uh, load balancer. That doesn't need to be um, software load balancer, but could be like uh, a visual IP. And so you can have multiple proxy running behind the same IP. And um, you, you can have also have multiple. Um, multiple way of doing it 
Uh, for example, you can run multiple proxy listening on the same port because this is allowed by proxy SQL. I was mentioning this before. And so it does not just make it highly available, but you can ever run two different versions at the same time. Um, now, can this be more close to the app? I'm not really sure to what you are referring, but um, uh, Proxy SQL can be either configured close to the database server or close to the app. And where you deploy it, uh, like close to which one of the two layers or if exactly in between, it really depends from your specific use case. For example, if your end goal is just to reduce the number of connections on the database server, I have seen cases in which Proxy SQL was efficiently uh, deployed on the database server and github is an example of this uh, so they were just they basically managed to drop the number of connection from tens of thousands of connection to just very few less than 100 and the way of doing this is that because all the application no matter how many applications they were they were all connecting to one proxy that was right in front of the database server and uh, in that case it made sense for them but you can have other scenarios in which you want to run proxy sql as close as possible to the application especially in the example i was mentioning before like if you want uh, to achieve ha in this way like having the application proxy sql working as a single unit another reason why you might want the application another reason uh, I'm trying to share my screen into my, yeah. So another reason why you might want to have your um, proxy SQL installed uh, running as close as possible to the application is, for example, if you are running on an environment in which you have your um, all your applications spread across multiple DC or uh, in the same AWS region but across multiple LZ, you want in this case the application as close as possible to the application server to avoid any unnecessary cross LZ communication or in case in which uh, yeah, your application is getting a lot of uh, data from proxy SQL cache. Another very good idea is to have proxy SQL as close as possible to the application. Uh, speaking about cache, um, having the proxy SQL as close as possible to the application introduce an interesting drawback is that that every proxy will have its own cache so in this case if you want to have cache to be shared by multiple application what you need to do is try to move proxy sql away from the application so every application or the application will share a common cache so where to deploy it really depends from case to case Um, now, the next question was, does Proxy SQL package include Proxy SQL admin tool from Percona? Uh, no, uh, our own packages do not include Proxy SQL admin tool from Percona. I, I'm not sure which is the, um, uh, the long-term plan that Percona has with regard to Proxy SQL admin, but currently uh, we, do not include, we do not include it. Uh, can you give more insights on support for multiple cluster and um, like multiple cluster of the same technology like having multiple Galera cluster so the way you configure it is to have um, uh, every cluster is in proxy sql is nothing more than is represented as nothing more than a row in a configuration table so specifically for Galera for instance is the MySQL Galera uh, host groups and there you basically have one row for every cluster so if you want to configure just one cluster you insert one row with the configuration of this cluster if you want to have 10 cluster configured behind one single proxy you just configure 10 rows there and basically there what you define is the host group of um, related to that specific cluster and that's it so it scales to any sort of number so if you want to have 100 cluster, the same principle apply. Just add one row for every cluster you want to have there. Uh, what happened when write requests down to proxy SQL when master is down? So normally what proxy SQL does, 
because it's able to identify uh, the request and it's able to identify that this request has to be executed in the master, what it normally does is it holds the request until the master, until a master become available. So if you have a replication manager that is performing the failover, Proxy SQL is able to hold the request for a certain period of time before executing it to the new master or returning the error to the client. This depends from how you configure it because there are certain applications that they prefer uh, to not receive any error. So they are okay in waiting 10 seconds or even more uh, the time that um, uh, the new master come online, while there are other applications that instead prefer to have a fail fast approach. So as soon as a database server is not there, so a possible has nowhere to execute the query, certain applications prefer to have an error straight away. Is Amazon RDS proxy based upon the proxy SQL code? I have no idea. And uh, AWS uh, doesn't make any uh, statement about this, so I, I don't know. Uh, does Proxy SQL support Postgres? Not right now. Uh, we have planned support for it, uh, but we don't have any timeline yet. Uh, but it is on the roadmap for sure. Uh, for the air setup, uh, where there are two XDB clusters in two different uh, data center, how to configure proxy SQL in this scenario? So um, it, it really depends. So what you can do is that you can configure you can configure either like a single Carrera cluster if they are really this way, or or I don't know if you're using standard replication from one cluster to another one. But if they are just one cluster, you can configure them uh, as a single cluster. And um, if you're configuring them as a single cluster, Proxy SQL is still able to determine which one is the one in the same um, in the same DZ because it also check the latency uh, with every database server. So if detected if a database server is uh, far, so it means it is a different DZ, it doesn't send traffic to it unless the, all the nodes in the same cluster are are down. And uh, I think, considering the time, I should pass. Um, the, uh, we should start with the next session. Uh, but I'm very happy to continue answering those questions at the end of uh, at the end of the session.